In this video we're going to take a look at a database feature of Excel called filtering. Um, the database items for Excel are on the data tab and filtering is in the sort and filter group here. There's two ways to do filtering. There's what's called an auto filter, um, although here it's just labeled filter. Uh, and there's also an advanced filter and in this video we're going to take a look at how you do auto filtering. Now filtering uh, in Excel is basically the same thing as searching the internet. Um, when you go to a search engine on the internet and you type in some keywords what the search engine is doing for you is filtering the internet. It is hiding the websites that don't have the words that you requested and it's going to show you the ones that do have the words that you requested and filtering in Excel works pretty much the same way. Again, we are using database features, uh, not the calculation features of Excel. And when you use database features, all of the data on a single row is related and must remain together. So I've got a record here for George Washington. This information has to remain together no matter what I do. Okay. So um, let's say that uh, I am looking for just the computer science majors. Well, uh, all you have to do is put the cursor in the data someplace. If I'm out here and I click on filter, um, it doesn't know what to do. So uh, put the cursor someplace in the data and then click on filter. And what it does is it looks for all of the data around where you, your cursor is and it goes up and down and left and right as far as it can to find adjacent data cells and um, so if all of your data is um, in rows without any blank rows or blank columns uh, it'll work just fine. If you do have some blank rows or blank columns in there uh, you'll probably have to select the data before you start. Okay and you notice when I said clicked on filter the only thing that happened was I get these little down arrows here on the end of every one of my columns. I'm going to make this one just a little bit wider so I can see all of the word major and let's say I want to see the computer science majors. Uh, filtering is just about the easiest thing to do in Excel. Uh, click on the down arrow here. Uh, you get a list of check boxes that has every single value that occurs in that column. And I'm going to turn off select all. And if I want the computer science majors, that's CSCI. Turn that check box on. Click on OK. And those are my computer science majors. Now, several things happen when you do this. Uh, first of all, a little funnel appears next to the down arrow here. Uh, so that's how you know that there's a filter being applied in this column. Uh, the other thing is that over here on the left, uh, the numbers are no longer uh, adjacent numbers. Uh, I've got gaps in there. And uh, the numbers also turn blue. So there are several clues that Excel gives you that lets you know that you are not looking at all the data. Also, whenever you do a filter down here in the lower left hand corner, uh, it will tell you how many records it found that match the criteria and how many total records there were. So there's only uh, six here. It's not a big deal to count six, but if you're working with a large data set and you just want to know how many records match the rule, uh, this would be a whole lot easier to do than counting them up. Okay, if you want to turn the filter off, it's as simple as going to the filter button and clicking on clear filter. And it brings everything back. The little funnel goes away. Uh, you can also, uh, in addition to filtering, uh, you can do sorting here too. Um, so once you've got these little down arrows at the top, uh, you can sort the data. So now I've got it sorted by major. Uh, and there's a little arrow here with going up, which means it's an increasing or ascending order. And if I click on the down arrow, here, down arrow and click on sort Z to A, uh, the arrow changes directions. It's pointing down, which means I have a descending sort. Now, sorting doesn't really matter for the rest of what we're doing. I just wanted to show you that you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, now, at Briarcliff, in the business department, we actually have three majors. We have um, business administration, human resource management, and accounting. So, you may want to select more than one column, not one column, but more than one value in a given column. So I want uh, accounting, I want business administration, and I want uh, HRM. So I just turn those three check boxes on, click on OK. And because I sorted it by major ahead of time, it's got them nicely grouped by major here. But I've got all of the HRM majors, all the business majors, and all of the accounting majors. So you can turn on as many check boxes as you want when you're doing a text filter. 
Now you can also filter on more than one column. Um, so let's say that I want to um, filter first of all on major and then I want to filter on advisor. I just want uh, students for whom Frangidakis is the advisor. Click on OK and that narrows the list down a little bit more. Uh, it applies this filter and it applies this filter so I'm only going to get people for whom the, the major is either business accounting or HRM and who have an advisor named Frangidakis. And you can apply as many filters as you want here. It's just like adding more keywords in a web search. Uh, the more keywords you add, the fewer hits you're going to get. And the more filters you apply here, the fewer hits you're going to get as well. It's as if the word and were connecting the rules and and means both so uh, both of the rules or if you're doing more than two all of the rules must be true before the record will be selected and that's how you do text filtering in Excel